Hi, I'm Alex with the Boone County Cooperative Extension Service, here for your weekly hiking highlight video. I'm just inside the entrance to Davu Park in Covington once again, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about pawpaws. So if you look around me, all of these trees that are getting their flowers and are just starting to get their leaves are common pawpaws. They're native to most of the eastern United States, but they're not the only variety of pawpaw. There are several different kinds that are native to the eastern U.S. So these are just starting to get their flowers and leaves. They're a little more identifiable once their leaves have come out. But there's an interesting thing about their flowers, which you can get a little bit more of a close-up here of. They're a really deep purple color. And similar to the uh, calorie pear that we talked a little bit about last week, they smell really rancid. And so they're pollinated by flies. The pawpaw was spread through most of the Eastern United States by Native American tribes. And it's really cool because pawpaws will actually produce a fruit that tastes like a mix between banana, mango, and citrus fruit in the late summer to early fall. However, pawpaws are really cool in another way because they're clonal. So all of these pawpaws that we just looked at are most likely part of one patch. So they're all genetically similar. They're all connected underground by one root system. So these probably won't get uh, fruit unless there's another pawpaw in the area that is genetically distinct from them. But why are the pawpaws ecologically important? They are the host plant, pawpaws are the only host plant for the zebra swallowtail butterfly caterpillar. So in a few weeks, hopefully when these start to get a little more leaves, the zebra swallowtail will come and it'll lay its eggs on the underneath of the leaves. And once those eggs hatch, those caterpillars will feed on the leaves. It's important to remember that only the caterpillar depends on this tree. Not that that makes it any less important because they are linked one to one. So the survival of that swallowtail depends on the survival of the pawpaw. But the adult swallowtail, the butterfly, can feed on a variety of nectar sources and flowers. So we're actually gonna head a little bit deeper into the park and we're gonna talk about another interesting native plant. So we've moved a little bit deeper into Davu. The Behringer Crawford Museum is behind me to my right and all around me are their pollinator gardens. They've planted a variety of native wildflowers and native grasses that provide habitat and food for a lot of different native pollinators. So in this native pollinator garden, somewhere is Dutchman's pipe or pipe vine. Unfortunately, it is not flowering or blooming right now, so we can't find it. But it is important ecologically because it is the host plant for the pipe vine swallowtail, also called the blue swallowtail butterfly. So very similar to the other butterflies we talked about, the blue swallowtail will come in, it'll plant its eggs on the bottom of the leaves of the pipe vine, the caterpillar will hatch, eat its fill, grow up and eventually develop into a full-grown pipe vine swallowtail. It's really interesting because similar to the monarch milkweed, it is poisonous because the pipe vine has a toxic acid that the caterpillar eats that eventually makes the adult butterfly poisonous. And so just like the monarch, that bright blue color is a type of aposomatic coloration that warns predators that it's toxic. So there's a couple things to remember here while we're talking about these different pollinators. One of the things that we talked about a lot is that the leaves are important to the caterpillars, but the butterflies depend on a lot of floral resources, a lot of different types of flowers in order to be able to survive. So although we talked about how the leaves of these trees and plants are important, it's important to plant a variety of different native flowers in your garden. And just like I did last week, I'll include a couple resources in the information that'll help you plant some native plants. And when you're hiking, I know we talk about a lot, a lot about identification, but don't worry about being able to identify these plants. So join us again next week. We're going to switch gears a little bit, but we'll still be talking about some native plants and native pollinators. See you then.